who Makoba, are you uh, are you in the room? One second. Yeah, Makoba, you're in the room. Um could you because I know there is a there there is a um there was a question that you had with regards to um inflation and I think it was inflation and GDP. Makoba, you there? Yeah, right. So I don't know if you can if you can uh, unmute your mic and and ask uh, the question. And as I'm talking, because I'm talking about the economy and inflation right now, hopefully I can explain your question within a, you know a few minutes or so. So what was it again? So what was your uh, your question? Hi, Makoba. Yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The problem is when the the inflation and um, GDP is going in, in two directions. Maybe, for example, if the economy is into recession, it's going into recession, and the inflation is, high, is, going, is going up away from 2% target. Okay. Yeah. I, I get confused what central bank is going to do if there is, there is a difference in... Because in, in order for the central bank to rise, to, to rise rates... Uh-huh. Uh, GDP, GDP and inflation, they must be going the same, in the same direction. They must be going high. Right. So the case uh, when okay. they are not going in the same direction. Yeah, I, I, because I when I was trying to when, when I was trying to to to, to answer the, the test, I faced some situation where uh, the economy is in, is in a contraction. At the same time, inflation yeah. is going high. So it right. is just a problem for me to understand what the direction. Ah, okay. All right. So what you're describing, and thank you for that as well. And it is a difficult question to ask, uh, to answer. And it's what's known as stagflation, uh, Makoba. Yeah. So stagflation, yeah, is, let me just type in stagflation, All right? The definition of stagflation. And it's when in, econo in, in economics, zoom in. So in economics, stagflation or recession inflation is a situation where inflation rate is high, yeah, going higher or increasing, and the economic growth rate slows and unemployment remains steadily high, right? Um, but what we're focusing on is, is, is this, and this is basically exactly what you're talking about. So the, we're, get, we're going into economic contraction, you know, negative growth potentially and slowing down, but inflation is going high. So it's, it's known as stagflation, known as stagflation. And so it is what is a bit of um, a, a conundrum for central banks, right? And so I guess anyone who hasn't taken the test is probably going to get the answer now. <laughs> it's going to get the answer for the test. But um, as long as you understand it, this is, this is uh, or for one of the questions of the test, I should say. But, um, but as long as you understand it, that's the main thing. So it's, it's as you correctly said, typically what, you know, for, for central banks to high rates, what you would expect to happen is for the economy to be growing, yeah? But this isn't always the case. We don't live in a perfect world, unfortunately. So there are going to be um, uh, situations economically and, and, and inflation-wise um, where um, inflation is going higher, but we have is what is known as, um, uh, I guess, a contraction or, or an economic slowdown. So as you're saying, you know, what... What do you do in that situation where are really kind of like two things or, you know, that you can do? Yeah. Or what central banks, because really the question is to think like a central bank. Right. So what do you prioritize? Do you prioritize GDP? Right. I.e., you know, a recession. Right. Do you prioritize that? Or do you prioritize inflation? What is the bigger threat? And it's difficult to say. I can't, it, you know, it's not, it's not a one answer. I suppose to be an end, by the way. Um, it's it's not a one answer thing. It's not a binary thing where it's like, if this happens, then we must do this. It's very dynamic in the way that you have to think about these things. Um, but in terms of stagflation, yeah, there are in, in the way to trade stagflation, there are really, you know, kind of two things that you can eat that you can do. Yeah, is is going into detail is actually looking at what the market is more focused on in terms of is it focused on um, uh, the is, is, is are the central bankers in um, uh, 
uh, focused on the inflation side of things because they have to get things back to the 2% target, yeah? Or are they focused on GDP and avoiding a recession, yeah? So in, 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 in the situation that we're in currently today's, you know, not hypotheticals, but in today's environment, We've known for a long time or for a while that central banks are prioritizing inflation over GDP. Hence the reason why they are hiking rates, even though you're having an economic slowdown, you're going into the contraction, potentially, you know, recession phase. This is recession. This is a contraction phase yeah, of the economic cycle. And that's maybe the bust or slump. And then that's the recovery right there. Yeah. So what they're doing is, is they're saying, okay, before we potentially get to recession, before the data gets to a recession, right, we have a bit of leeway. Let's try to combat inflation first by hiking interest rates, right, by hiking interest rates, yeah, to try to get inflation back down to that 2% target. Yeah, because inflation at the moment is, you know, is, is basically getting out of control. And I'm going to talk about that. You know, um, the, I think the data come out today, uh, which was talking about inflation at 9.1 um, percent in Europe. Is that correct? Something like that. Someone double check that for me. But I think it's over about 9.1, 9.2 percent. I think I updated the um, the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet. Europe is actually number three on, on the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. Crazy to think. I haven't seen that in in, uh, in a long time, but um, I'll get to that anyways in, in, in a little bit. But to understand what, you know, ultimately um, central banks are thinking and central bankers are thinking about, you know, stagflation, it's either one of two things. Either they're prioritizing GDP or they're prioritizing inflation. And we've known that they've been prioritizing inflation because, uh, so Daniel says 9.1, okay, percent, and core is 4.3, okay, brilliant. Um, they've been prioritizing inflation, right? So hence the reason why you're seeing interest rates, right? Hike, you know, hike interest rates. Now, that doesn't always mean, it doesn't always translate into um, a currency being uh, appreciating because a central bank is hiking rates. Typically, we know that to be true. Yeah, we know that to be true. Or what, what typically happens historically is that whenever central banks hike rates, they obviously, you know, the, that should appreciate and create demand for a currency because, um, you know, uh, investors who are holding that currency want a better return. Right. So, you know, that's basically what it is. But when you have a recession on 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 the uh, on the horizon or a potential recession on, um, recession on the horizon you know the question is where do investors what are you know what are investors really concerned about are they more concerned about the coming recession the impending recession or are they con more concerned with potentially holding you know dollars or euros or you know pounds to try and get a return on their um or, or, or to get a yield, right, on their on their investment by holding that particular currency. It's very difficult to know, to get into the minds of, you know, millions of people, right? It's, it's difficult to do that. But the, so, so the general consensus is, 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 or I should say, really, it's understanding the nuances, yeah, of every situation, because every situation is unique. The, the last stagflation situation, there would be there, there are different there are slightly different factors to what is happening in you know 2022 and you know if 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 we ever have another stagflation scenario in maybe the next 10 15 20 years it will be slightly different to how to what we're facing today yeah so to kind of wrap this up um it, what does that mean for for how you trade currencies because ultimately that's what you know the question that that we're ultimately asking now if you're unsure about stagflation personally you can either stay out of that currency yeah because if you don't know whether it's going whether whether you know uh, the currency is going to go higher or lower because you know uh, you know the market or or generally market the market is concerned more about you know inflation or if it's concerned more about a recession and it's difficult to understand then what you can do is stay out of that but as we trade currencies in pairs yeah the the, the smarter thing to do i guess would be to trade a currency yeah um 
because currencies are obviously traded against each other and trading them in pairs, is to trade is to buy a currency that is is doing economically good, right? Versus a currency that isn't doing or that is in stagflation, right? So if that's in stagflation and there's a lot of uncertainty around, yeah, where do you think the majority of traders or what should follow logically, yeah, in terms of where would you put your money into? What what we where would you invest? Is would you invest in a in a in a in, a, in an economy, in a country, in a central bank that is more stable, or would you go into stagflation? You know, and risk your money in a in a country in an economy that is going into stagflation, right? It's a no brainer to put your money into you know this economy, right? So if you can identify, which we do, the economy, yeah, that is doing you know pretty well or doing okay, or again, you know, the, the phrase that I use all the time is the dog with the least fleas compared to a country that is you know suffering from stagflation and a lot of uncertainty this is where you want to buy and this is where you would want to sell yeah and if you're obviously buying the the, the, the base currency and you're selling the quote currency then you should see the market do something like this if this is you know if you're buying the quote currency let's say for example that is the, the economy that you think is doing well and that's the economy that is in stagflation then you will see or typically see a downtrend i'm saying downtrends are going to you know look perfect and they're going to make perfect lower highs and lower lows right but ultimately you should see the market do that and you're seeing that take place and um i think spank yeah spank said that's you know he, he mentioned the uk right and the reason why the uk is going through um it's um uh, you know it's it's selling off it's because there are a number of risk factors as well as stagflation going on with the UK economy, the cost of living crisis, inflation going higher. Um, and that's the same across the board, right? Same in Europe, and it's the same even in the US. But again, when you compare all three or all you know eight currencies that we trade side by side, which is what we're looking at in terms of the, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, Again, it's all about who is the best of the worst over time. It's difficult to, to try to match that week to week, yeah, day to day, because we know that there are, you know, uh, traders are positioning themselves, banks are positioning themselves, there's liquidity, you know, traders are, uh, and, and investors are looking to buy at bargains, there's, um, you know, iceberg orders, etc. So I can't say this day in time, or this week in time, this is exactly what's going to happen. No one can. If I did, then I would just take that one trade, you know, bet all the money I had, and, you know, make, you know, millions of pounds, right, on that one trade. Nobody knows. So it's a probabilities game. So I know overall, and you guys have been with me for at least a minimum now of two to three months, and you've seen for your own eyes, right, week in, week out, the, the fundamental analysis videos that I've been doing week to week, and you're seeing that play out in the market, right, overall. Yeah, when we've, when, we've, when we've looked at, when you've joined, and I've been saying, okay, you know, short, for example, pound dollar over the last two to three months. What's happened to the pound dollar? Where was where has the money really been made to the short side? And it's because the, the the pound dollar, yeah, the dollar CAD, and I can name you know you know loads of currencies that you guys have been trading them, um, where my bias has literally been either long or short, and you're seeing that play out. So that is really how you trade stagflation. Yeah, but it is understanding the nuances. Of, you know, you do have to keep abreast with what the central banks are actually saying, what they're prioritizing, and um, and and uh, you know what's going on in the country. What other risk factors do they have, and what the market thinks of those risk factors? And we'll get into you know confirming that with uh, you know bank analysis and things like that. But does that explain um, uh, your question, Makoba? Does that answer your question? And is there, is there, has anyone else got any uh, questions that they want to ask about that? Is that clear for everyone? Yep, hundred percent survey. Brilliant. All right, cool. Yeah, very clear. Excellent, excellent. So anyone who's uh, who's new or doesn't understand these things, brilliant. That's how you trade stagflation. Yeah, it's you're not trading it in a vacuum. It's not in isolation. 
trade it against the currency that is um you know that is doing better than than that currency and then you it's it's easier to see yeah excellent okay brilliant right let's move on so with that being said going back to uh jackson hole review yeah so pretty much all central banks are are are, are hawkish um, you know, we've got Jackson Hole, top central bankers deliver hawkish message at Jackson Hole um, and ECB's officials as well are acting forcefully to, cu to curb uh, red hot prices. Um, so that is, um, you know, pretty much the nuts and bolts of um, of Jackson Hole. Right. And again, we've seen that kind of playing out. And I think the only um, bank that was pretty much pledging loose pol policy, um, meaning that they're not looking to high crates. Um, and by the way, but the Bank of Japan does have a, uh, a habit historically of surprising the market as well, as well. So you have to be aware of that. You know, they, it's like the Bank of Canada as well, where they, um, they might say one thing and then, you know, maybe, you know, two months down the line, all of a sudden they just switch their, uh, <laughs> their, their bias right now that's not to say that you know you're trying to you know second guess the central bankers always go with what they you know typically go with what they say but it sets up a, a, a nice trade when you understand in 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 for, for example with the bank of japan we all know or we should know anyway that the 140s yeah uh 140 141 area is the area where you want to look where they basically said um that they may start to um you know change policy or adjust policy in terms of um you know maybe interest rates um you know uh, adjusting their bonds quantitative easing etc right so 140 is still the level to 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 kind of you know be pay attention to now, if you still start to, if you start to see um, prices go above that 140, I'm not saying that, that it's going to be at that exact price, right? Nobody knows. But if it starts to go around the 140, but you also start to see, yeah, that inflation for Japan is rising again away from, um, from their 2% target, because I think they're at 2.4 or something like that, 2.6% inflation. And you start to see maybe it goes to maybe 3%. The, the central banks, you know, the Bank of Japan are going to be forced to do what? A hike or cut rates? Are they going to continue to, you know, uh, you know be, be, be dovish or would they start to turn hawkish is the question. Asabi says hike, so hawkish. Ademola says hawkish. Yeah, that's exactly it. Daniel says hike, absolutely. So you understand now, you know, the, the and and it, and you know what's what's happening. So, or what potentially could happen. So, although right now they're they're being you know they're they're, they're quite dovish and continues to be dovish, that could change depending on obviously inflation and inflation being driven up by a weaker yen, right? A weaker yen. And a de devaluing yen, you know, pushes up inflation, which then forces the central bank to will have to potentially now step in to try to get inflation to come down because they don't want inflation to get to four, five, six percent, seven percent, etc. Yeah. So there's that. So again, no matter what, guys, if you have a if you have a, a solid understanding of how fundamental analysis works. You can, I'm not saying that you can never be taken off guard. Of course you can, but you have a roadmap and you can have a plan um, for, for the future, right? And, you, you know, you're, it's, it's not, you can understand why bankers will be doing certain things. And then on many, some occasions, you can actually get ahead of, you know, the, uh, uh, the situation and start to position 